Sometime late next year, think like October, November of 2024, it's going to start to cost you money to drive across the Abernathy and Tualatin bridges as you cruise along Interstate 205 near Oregon City. Now, we're going to get into how much it's going to cost in just a minute. But first, let's take a look at a bill in the Oregon legislature that would put a stop to the tolling. Stop it in its tracks. Senate Bill 933 would force the Oregon Department of Transportation to hit the brakes. It's sponsored by Senator Mark Meek and several others. Meek is a Democrat from the Gladstone area. The bold words there on the page that we've highlighted spell it out. The Transportation Commission cannot assess a toll on Interstate 205 or I-5. It does allow for tolling on the new I-5 bridge across the Columbia, by the way. One of the people who are helping promote the bill is former State Senator Rick Metzger. He served in the legislature from 1999 until 2011 and is now a lobbyist representing the trucking industry. He argues the current tolling plan does not make sense. One of the goals of congestion pricing, uh, which is to move people, uh, encourage them to take transit uh, uh, rather than their automobile uh, to their different services. Where ODOT is starting in the South Metro area, um, tolling multiple places on the Abernathy and uh, the Tualatin Bridge areas, South 205, between Gladstone and Tualatin, uh, there is no transit service. There is no TriMet. There is no passenger bus service. Um, and so the tolls, to use that as an argument, um, is really misplaced until such time that those other options for drivers to get out of their cars, but they would have no option other than diverting onto local neighborhoods. Metzger headed the Transportation Committee in the state Senate for eight years, so he's not new to this. He says a better idea is to create express lanes with tolls to allow people who want to pay to go faster without forcing everyone to pay the tolls. Udad says they need the tolls on the bridges to pay for the construction that's underway there. Metzger argues, nah, they could find that in other parts of their budget. Udad also says they need tolling to pay for the gas tax money that they're losing from all you people who have electric vehicles and more efficient cars and trucks. Metzger says a better answer to that is to tax drivers for every mile they drive. So that's one thing that's going on with tolling. Here's another. A group of citizens are gathering signatures to force a statewide vote on tolling. The group is called Vote Before Tolls. So there are two efforts now underway to stop the tolling in its tracks. But in the meantime, the process is rolling right along. This is an ODOT graphic that shows you, though, with the squiggly lines there, where the tolls would be set up on the Abernathy and Tualatin bridges. In order to actually put the tolls there in place, ODOT had to create something called an environmental impact assessment. This is the cover page. It's a massive study. It's 192 pages plus several appendixes. It's clear this was a monumental effort and it's impressive how much detail is in here. I mean, clearly a lot of people worked for a long time and very hard on this. It is impressive. One thing I looked for and found what it might cost you to cross the Abernathy and Tualatin bridges at different times of the day. ODOT assumes that during the peak hours, which are 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., it would cost between a buck 65 and 220 to cross each bridge. The rate difference is dependent on each day. There's also something called shoulder peak hours. That's from 5 to 6 a.m., 9 to 10 a.m., 1 to 3 p.m., and 7 to 8 p.m. During that time, it would cost a dollar to cross each bridge. Off peak hours would run from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m., and it would cost 55 cents to cross each bridge, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and also 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. During those time blocks, it would cost 65 cents to cross each bridge. Let's think about the worst case scenario here. If you need to cross both bridges to go to work and both bridges to come home from work in rush hour, it would be as much as $8.80 per day. Times five days, that would be $44 a week. Times four weeks, that would be $176 per month. And times 11 months, because, you know, you got to take one off for vacation, that would cost you $1,936 per year. That sort of adds up, huh? Well, you need to know two things about that. First, those are the assumed fees that ODOT is using. They could be changed a bit, and the Oregon Transportation Commission will have the final say on what they actually are, if that bill I mentioned doesn't block them earlier, that is. Secondly, this is the environmental assessment. ODOT estimates the average household would spend more like $575 a year on tolls on those two bridges. And since I know you're wondering, ODOT also expects the tolling on the bridges would generate a total of about $132 million a year. 
Now, here's another interesting thing I found in the study. ODOT's identified more than 45 intersections that could be impacted by drivers bailing out to avoid the tolls. If you live in this area, you may want to go in and see what this shows. They have various projections for where traffic will get bad, and sometimes that includes what traffic would look like if they didn't do anything and didn't build anything new on the bridges. We'll post a link to that big ODOT report with our story at KGW.com. And you should check it out if you have time. I found it fascinating. Now, while all this is going on, ODOT has three major committees still meeting to talk about the many aspects of tolling. Earlier this week, something called the Regional Toll Advisory Committee met. They met online, which sort of made them look like a turbocharged version of the Brady Bunch. But this is serious stuff. The group is supposed to be deciding how the money from all that tolling is split up. The tensions seem to be running quite high, which is why I'm going to show you the following clip. During that meeting this week, a county commissioner from Clackamas asked an ODOT person if tolling money could be used for maintenance on buses and trains because he'd been told that the money could only be used to buy buses or trains and not for maintenance. And that's when the fireworks erupted. And Metro's president, Lynn Peterson, cut off the ODOT speaker, who was the chief economist for ODOT. Ready to see that? Here we go. It might be able to fund capital, but it will not fund operations and maintenance, which is our Achilles heel um, in our transit system. Is that correct? Commissioner, I, let's, I think that we have to be careful when we talk about transit in terms of like light rail versus like buses, right? Light rail is clearly not part of the, um, the, the roadway. And so that's that I think case law has talked about that. But I'm going to ask you to stop. Are you an attorney? I am not an attorney. So <laughs> there you go. Then I would ask you to be very careful because you are not actually within the understanding of the entire region on how gas tax vehicle registration money can be used. So let's proceed carefully. You just waded into something that I'm not sure that is accurate at all. So I, I, I'm sorry I had to cut you off, but this is really important. And just going into different modes of transit and saying what is and what is not, you are you are wading into something that you may not know enough about. Do it out it. Um, so I guess I will uh, shut up and uh, not talk about what is legal or not legal because I am not an attorney. That's trying to give you guys a framework what you could. Think about how things could be have be used. Um, I do have a like, decades of experience in this, so this is not coming from a, a uh, from not having any uh, background in this and a lot of these conversations. A little bit icy in there, I think. I showed you that because I sort of assumed these committee meetings are basically snoozers, but apparently not with the pressure that's growing on everybody. So here's what we've learned when it comes to tolling. First, there is a bill in the legislature that could stop all of it, except for the tolling of the new bridge over the Columbia River. That is gonna happen. I think we have to learn to live with that one. There's also an initiative petition to try and stop tolling, but ODOT is moving full steam ahead and has an important report out that looks at all sorts of impacts, and you can and should comment on them as well. Finally, this is a huge deal for everyone, and we're starting to see it show up now with the pressure on the ODOT committees. So, what do you think about all this? Send me an email, will you? Whether you're for it or against it, doesn't matter. We all just want to hear what you have to think. Our email address is the story at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail. Our phone number is 503-226-5090.